in the last video I was talking about, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle change. I think a lot of people are cottoning on to the fact that diets don't work. And so they can't sell diets. So they have to sell lifestyle changes instead. And once again, it really bugs me that human beings genuinely believe they know more than our, than their bodies do. Like, we think we're smarter than, than the body. We're not. We really aren't. I don't care how far we've come when it comes to technology. Nothing can replicate the human body. People have tried. You know, I was thinking about artificial intelligence the other day. Like, it doesn't even come close. We are all adept at recognising when something was written by AI, when something was drawn by AI. We can immediately spot it and be like, that's fake. Sometimes it's harder than others, but yeah. You cannot replicate the human body. So this idea that we can somehow trick the body, like, come on now. Our bodies are too smart for that. They have been evolving for hundreds of thousands of years. So when it comes to hunger and fullness... Um, these are regulated by very complex interactions that take place in the body. It's to do with the brain, the digestive system and the endocrine system, it hormones. Those three systems working together in very complex ways that we don't fully understand in order to tell us when we're hungry, when we're full. And so we can't suddenly just trick ourselves. <laughs> It's fine. This is fine. This is all normal. It's completely normal. Like our, our body's too smart. Our brain's too smart. Our digestive system is too smart. And our hormones also too smart. Um, the more you try to trick your body, the more harm you're doing in the long term. I cannot stress this enough. I just, you, 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 your body is a finely tuned machine. The more you mess with it, the more deconditioned it becomes. And I'm not talking about muscle teeth deconditioning here. I'm talking just about your body's natural responses. Hunger and fullness is a really good example of that. A baby is born and we generally feed them on demand. Although we don't always, um, and with bottle-fed babies, maybe we are much more strict about their schedule, but certainly when it comes to breastfeeding, we encourage breastfeeding parents to breastfeed on demand. Baby cries, wants food, you feed them. And uh, there comes a point in time when we start introducing food rules, like finish everything on your plate or you can't have pudding until you've finished all your, you know, your main course or, uh, you know, eat that broccoli <laughs> or else you're not going out to play or uh, haven't you had enough? Or, you know, when a kid says, I'm hungry and they're like, no, you aren't, you've just eaten. <laughs> we start introducing food rules. We start telling children that they're not to trust their hunger and fullness cues. And that just gets worse. We hit puberty and all of a sudden we're weight shaming children and all sorts of nonsense. And um, in the UK, there's something called the National Child Measurement Programme in which we're weighing children at the age of six to seven. And then we're sending letters home with parents saying your child is fat or very fat. In other words, overweight or obese. And uh, parents immediately advise to put their children on a diet. In fact, the current guidelines that they're working on in the UK is that we're going to start uh, introducing diets in children as young as two and a half. And in the UK and in the States, the American Gu uh, Academy of Peric Pediatrics has already got that far. We're going to start starving children as young as three. So your body doesn't get to do what it's supposed to do. And that is not right as you eat. There's a series of hormonal signals and nervous signals that come from the stomach and the intestinal tract to tell your brain that you're full. But there are also lots of psychological, social, environmental factors which will also impact or influence your hunger and your fullness as well. You can't. We don't know enough to be able to trick the body. We don't even understand it properly, let alone think we can somehow retrain the body. We can't. The more you mess, the worse it gets. And here are some fun facts for you. I'm reading them off my phone. Adding protein to your diet doesn't improve your resting metabolic rate. People are always like, it's fine. Go on a diet, but make sure you have lots of protein and that will improve your resting metabolic rate. No, it doesn't. Um, like The evidence is there. I've linked it at the bottom of this video. If you think that somehow cutting down on carbs and replacing them with protein is the best way to sustain weight loss, then you are mistaken and you ought to think again. There are the very low calorie diets, the VLCDs. Have you heard about this? 800 calories, sometimes less. They appear to interfere with your thyroid hormones. And your thyroid hormone is crucial for a lot of things, regulating your metabolism, which is how they work, but also producing energy, growth, development. 
Uh, and I don't mean like physical growth, like, okay, that's important in your in puberty, but I mean cell growth, cell repair. When, you know, when you need to grow more cells, as you were doing constantly within your body. Um, so very low calorie diets have been shown to reduce a significant amount of lean mass in very short periods of time and um, impacting the resting metabolic rate, as we've talked about before. But they are also um, reducing the conversion of uh, thyroxine or T4, which is a thyroid hormone, into triiodo triiodo thyronine or t3 which is the active form of thyroid hormone so that seems to be what the very low calorie diets are doing they're messing with your whole your thyroid hormones and that is dangerous um people be like oh do you know what do you know what don't worry i know you're losing muscle mass but if you do resistance training that's going to pre prevent any decline in muscle mass right that's what everyone tells you again the evidence has made it clear that is not the case Resistance training will not prevent the decline in lean muscle mass and resting metabolic rate. No matter how hard you try, if you go on a diet and you start restricting, you will lose muscle mass and lean mass no matter how hard you try, try to maintain it. Stick as much protein in your diet as you want. Do as much resistance training as you want. It will not work. And go and ask any bodybuilder whether they starve themselves when they're trying to build up mass or muscle mass. They do not. That is not the way to build up muscle mass. So a lot of people um, who have listened to the third video now and are interested may be, um, well, a lot of people tend to ask me about set point theory. What do you think about set point theory? Set point theory is this idea um, that, um, like talking about the weight loss cycle, that everybody has like a set point that they tend to return to. And do you remember I said it starts off at 12 o'clock weight loss and then it slows down by about three o'clock, then at six o'clock, we hit the peak. And then we go around by nine o'clock, we're restoring weight. And by 12 o'clock, we've either restored it all, or in many cases, have we've overshot and we end up much he we end up heavier than when we started. So <clears throat> set point theory basically is like, the set point is 12 o'clock. But as I said, many people end up increasing their weight each time. So we don't return back to 12 o'clock we reset it's a new clock and um i so whilst i think set point theory is sort of similar to what i've been talking about i don't think it's the same i think your set point will continue to increase with every diet that you go on um and but i do think that if you stop dieting that most people will find eventually their bodies settle at a certain weight and it stays that way just for the most part Everyone I know that's been like, you know, not dieted, it is the diet for the last decade, say I'm roughly the same weight that I was. I don't wear myself anymore because that's part of ditching the diet, but I'm roughly the same weight that I was. You know, I haven't changed clothing size or whatever. I look the same. Um, So set point, meh, mm, kind of, but not quite. Uh, stop dieting and you'll probably find that you settle at a certain point. What I will say is caveat, <laughs> Uh, pregnancy, menopause, um, and aging, all impact your weight. And that's universal, doesn't matter how, how big you are or small you are. It probably impacts your weight more the bigger you are, but everyone will notice a difference in their weight during these periods of time. So that's normal. And that's sort of, you know, whether or not you're dieting, that's still inevitable for, for most people. And as I say, it's different for everybody. So um, that was three videos all about chapter one, which the first reason for why doctors shouldn't be prescribing weight loss. And that is because we're unshrinkable. Our bodies are not meant to lose weight. In other words, weight loss is unsustainable. And you could argue that should be the end of that. Why do you need 13 more reasons? Why? If it's not sustainable, it's not sustainable. The end. <coughs> the thing is that... <laughs> There are still people out there that will argue, well, it's still worth a shot. It's still worth a shot, even if it's unsustainable, because there's some people that can sustain that weight loss, right? There are a group of people that can sustain that weight loss. They're a small group, but they exist nonetheless. More and more evidence is showing that actually they have developed an eating disorder. You know, when I was talking about being in the swimming pool and holding your breath, there are people who, despite the desperate need to, to, to breathe, will force themselves to stay submerged underwater. 
even if it results in death. And that's what an eating disorder is. That no matter what, even though you desperately need to eat, you will not allow yourself to. That's kind of the very basis of an eating disorder. Now, people with eating disorders are not all trying to lose weight. I just want to make that very clear. But the ones who try to lose weight and sustain that weight loss have almost always developed an eating disorder, whether it's diagnosed or not. So there's that. So doctors all want you to be that person. Like, thinness is so important. Like, it's worth a shot. Develop an eating disorder. That will make you thin. Um, But more importantly, they're like, well, it's not everybody. So why not give it a shot? And the second thing, I guess, if it's like, why, you know, isn't it worth a shot? The idea is that it's not going to cause any harm. Like, why not give it a shot? It's not going to harm you in any way. Right? Right? Wrong. Wrong. And we're going to go into that over the next series of videos reason two reason three reason four we'll talk about why it doesn't work and reason five reason six reason seven we're going to talk about how harmful it is so isn't it worth a shot we're going to talk about first of all like i guess the carrot or no the benefits that's what we're we're going to talk about the benefits what are the benefits of weight loss isn't it worth a shot only if there are benefits what are the benefits and then we're going to look at well what are the risks what are the harms and uh I think by the end of those few reasons, you will begin to realise just why doctors shouldn't be prescribing weight loss. Join me then.